Welcome to CoreLogic's December Housing Market Update, our final wrap for the year. 2023 is ending with increasingly diverse housing conditions. While our National Home Value Index reached a nominal recovery in November, the market from city to city and region to region is moving at very different speeds. The 0.6% rise in the National Index in November was the smallest monthly gain since the growth cycle commenced in February. However, it was enough to push the index to new record highs. Following a 7.5% drop in values between the April 2022 peak and January 2023 trough, we've seen an 8.3% rise in values through to the end of November. Overall, it took nine months for the market to find a flaw through the downturn and 10 months to recover the losses, providing a V-shaped recovery in national home values. Multi-speed conditions have become increasingly evident across the capitals, with three cities recording a decline in values over the month. These were Melbourne and Hobart, both down 0.1%, and Darwin down 0.3%. Growth in Sydney home values also slowed sharply, reducing to just 0.3%, the smallest monthly gain through the recovery cycle to date. Sydney home values slipped into negative growth over the last week of the month, hinting that we could see Sydney follow Melbourne's lead, stabilising or moving into negative growth territory in December. On the flip side, Perth housing values accelerated into November, posting the largest monthly gain since March of 2021 at 1.9%. Brisbane housing values were up 1.3% and Adelaide values rose by 1.2%. Housing values in these three cities are all at record highs and continue to show remarkably low levels of advertised supply, while purchasing activity is holding at above average levels. The Melbourne Cup Day rate hike has clearly taken some heat out of the market, but other factors like rising advertised stock levels, worsening affordability and persistently low consumer sentiment are also acting as a drag on value growth. Outside of the capitals, the gap between regional and capital city growth rates has converged, with both the combined capitals and the combined regionals index recording a 0.6% rise in values in November. The convergence comes after regional markets have lagged their capital city counterparts through the recovery phase to date. While housing values across both of these broad regions found a floor in January, the combined capitals index has since increased by more than double the combined regionals index, up 9.6% and 4.3% respectively to the end of November. The rise in advertised stock levels has played a key role in slowing housing market conditions in some cities. Vendor activity started to rise through early winter, which is seasonally unusual, following an extended period where new listings consistently tracked below average levels. The persistent lift in selling activity since June has coincided with slower growth in home values. Total stock levels have been rising since July, indicating that purchasing demand isn't quite keeping pace with the rise in vendor activity. Over the four weeks ending November 26th, advertised stock levels were above the previous five-year average in Hobart, Canberra, Melbourne and Sydney. In these cities, market conditions are now in favour of buyers, as higher stock levels provide more choice, less urgency and greater opportunities to negotiate. The same can't be said for Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide, where advertised stock levels remain remarkably low. Perth listings are nearly 40% below their five-year average for this time of the year, while listings are more than 30% below average in Brisbane and Adelaide. Unsurprisingly, these cities are continuing to show a consistently high rate of growth amid strong selling conditions. It's looking increasingly clear the housing market is moving through a new inflection point, with the rate of growth and home values becoming more diverse, but generally weakening. The upswing in housing values since February has been relatively thinly traded and it's occurred against a backdrop of low inventory. As advertised stock levels rise to above average levels in some cities, the housing upswing has lost momentum. Downside risk factors have become more pronounced, including an expectation that interest rates could remain higher for longer, worsening affordability challenges and deeply pessimistic levels of consumer sentiment that look to be entrenched. The monthly inflation indicator for October came in much lower than expected, which may help to allay fears of further rate hikes and lift consumer spirits a little, but it's unlikely we'll see a material lift in housing activity until interest rates reduce, and that isn't likely until the second half of next year. Adding further downside risk to housing activity is a worsening in housing affordability, with a deterioration across every affordability metric through 2023 to date. 
The median dwelling value to income ratio rose to 7.5. The portion of household income required to service a new mortgage is close to record highs at 46.2%. It now takes an average of 10 years to save a 20% deposit, and the portion of household income dedicated to rental payments has risen to 31%. 2024 is shaping up to be a very different housing market, with expectations that value growth will be lower and more diverse from region to region and across the housing types. A few trends to watch for next year. Firstly, expect to see a more focused effort on delivering housing supply to the Australian housing market. A burgeoning housing undersupply is widely acknowledged by government, by policymakers and industry as a critical issue. Unfortunately, dwelling approvals are still holding well below average levels in 2023, and it's likely new housing starts will also remain low, despite the national objective of delivering 1.2 million well-located homes by 2029. While capacity constraints across the residential construction sector are starting to ease, profit margins remain compressed. Delivering a material lift in housing supply next year is going to be a real challenge. Another trend to watch for is a loosening in rental conditions. It's likely we're moving through a peak in net overseas migration, but other factors should see vacancy rates rising off record lows and rental growth slowing further, including a gradual normalization in household size, Reduced rental demand as home builder completions flow through and build to rent developments should also help to gradually add to rental supply. However, we aren't likely to see a material increase in build to rent supply until at least 2025. We're also likely to see growth in housing values become more diverse, both geographically and across the housing types. We're already seeing a trend towards a stabilization or even softening in capital growth rates across some cities, and overall we expect next year to be softer relative to 2023. WA and Queensland look well placed to outperform the rest of the country given solid interstate migration rates, low supply and less affordability challenges relative to Sydney and Melbourne. Unit values are also positioned to outperform relative to houses given the cheaper price points and burgeoning undersupply across the medium to high density sector. Climate change is also likely to be high in the housing policy agenda, with residential dwellings accounting for around 23% of Australia's energy usage and 11% of carbon emissions, policies aimed at reducing or improving the energy efficiency of Australian homes are likely to be a key area of focus for politicians, policymakers and the residential construction sector more broadly. Additionally, El Nino conditions are expected for 2024, which implies drier conditions and warmer temperatures. The risk of fire danger and drought are likely to be heightened in susceptible regions. There's never a dull time when it comes to the property market and all the factors that influence housing trends. You can access the latest data at the research and news pages of the CoreLogic website. On behalf of the entire CoreLogic team, thanks for tuning into our updates this year, and we wish you all the best through the festive season. Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2024.